Assalamualaikum and good morning, good afternoon or good evening guys Welcome to ADS465 Industrial Relations So my name is Mr. Azwan I will be teaching you guys this course So it's such an unfortunate that I couldn't see you guys uh, face to face But I hope that uh, by watching this video It will give you a glimpse of what are the lectures supposed to look like uh, in, in UITM So I hope that uh, we can meet uh, inshallah in the future either via face to face may it be from online platform or even in physical class yeah so hopefully someday yeah so i hope that you guys are staying safe at home uh, i hope that everyone here is uh, is okay with with how this class is being handled and i wish everyone's the best in terms of handling situation so uh, i will only be covering briefly in terms of the slides and the rest of it will be covered in our discussion group in whatsapp yeah so make sure that you if there's something that you're not clear with do contact me as soon as possible especially uh, during our class yeah because uh, it's going to be really fast for you guys so uh, welcome to industrial relations yeah it is 465 so here is the chapter one or L1 in your notes. So if you have notes, uh, you can take a look at them and refer to my uh, my discussion here. Yeah. So let's take a look at what is being stated here. So this is the overview of IR. Okay. Definitions. Let's take a look at definition. Relationship between an employee, employees, and his or their employer regarding employment or non-employment terms or employment conditions of the work and obligation of each party three ingredients should be present to create ir employer employment and employee so these are the parties that are in uh in we should call them in relationship yeah in relationship all this party just like how you are as an employee when you are working with your employer your relationship that exists between you is industrial relations yeah and we try to understand employment through the eyes of industrial relation we try to understand what are the connections and what are the effects that are being governed under industrial relations so in under industrial relation there are a few acts that we are going to uh, use so make sure you guys have all the act, acts yeah acts uh, or what kind of acts we it, it will be the discussed later on yeah so make sure you have that don't worry they all are available to be downloaded from google so you need to be ready with the acts so we can refer to to them when we need to yeah so this is basically uh, the definition of the principle of ir yeah so you can take a look at the example they, uh, in this slide is employer engagement with employment and the employment will engage with the employee remember when you write yeah especially uh, if you're not really confident with english employee is the worker okay and employer is the person giving the job do not mix it up okay do not mix it up so examining the relationship between workers and employees within the work environment only in the work environment we're not we're not going to go home and check like um if they are stressed out because of their because of their employer no only in within their work environment okay so three measures ir relationship between employers and tu okay i'm just going to simplify it uh, for ir we call trade unions as tu framework provided by employment laws these are will be discussed in later chapters and disciplinary, disciplinary procedures and termination of employment contract those are as well in the future yeah so let's move on what is a tu here so uh, uh, are any one of you members of any tu i believe uh, for those who are working in the public sector you might be joining any tu okay so for those of you who are not familiar with tu it is here defined in this particular slide okay let's let's read it together yeah a tu is independent association okay it is an association like pertubuhan yeah okay pertubuhan or combination of employees that acts as a voice to regulate relations between employees and employers for the purpose of improving good industrial relation enhance economic and social status for both parties as well as finding solutions to raise productivity for the benefit of those involved yeah so you need to uh, understand this is the meaning of a tu it exists as a group of workmen working together to enhance the bet, uh, the quality of working in that organization yeah there will be the one representing the employers in any dealings especially in grievance procedures that they're the uh, or anything that they're not satisfied with in their work lane yeah 
So here, this definition, I think you can read it on your own. I think it's really clear, yeah? Principle of IR relations. So there are actually four important principles. So number one is principle of trade unionism. So what is trade unionism? It's basically TU itself. You need to have an official registered and lawful trade union. You need to say that you, your trade union needs to be properly created, not like suddenly created from thin air. It needs to follow steps of law to be created. The principle of recognition of a union. Yeah, this so, so this is uh, also an extension of trade unionism. Meaning to say that your union needs to be recognized. If your union is not recognized, mean to say there are certain things that they cannot do properly. What are those things? We're gonna discuss in particular chapters that are covered in terms of this. But these are what we call uh, the four important principles. The principles of CB, yeah, or I don't know, or otherwise known as collective bargaining, leading to a CA, collective agreement. What are these two words terms? We're gonna discuss it when the chapter comes. So basically, I want I want you guys to just put it in your mind. It's basically uh, a way of negotiating to get something that the workers want. The principles of resolving trade dispute. So you resolve, resolve issues that are coming up. So. Trade dispute is very important for you guys to understand because it is the uh, the core of why industrial relation exists in the first place. Yeah. Concern with equity and good conscience means to say that anything relates uh, with equality between the employees and employer and everyone around and making everybody feeling good. Good conscience. Principle of unionism. I think we have we already discussed about this. So these are the extension, and I believe you can read it on your own. Yeah. Same recognition. CB to CA. And TU. Yeah. Okay. They yeah, are sorry. TD trade disputes. So you have see you can take a look trade disputes in Malaysia. Is direct negotiation, conciliation, and arbitration. So we're not going to discuss or touch much about this because this will be covered in later chapters as well as all of these principles. I already explained a few. I don't want to like focus too much because there are exact chapters that are going to cover this all of these principles yeah but basically uh, I already gave you some introduction towards what they are in under industrial relations yeah harmonious relations so this is the concept that is very important when you want to study industrial relations because this is what we call the goal of industrial relation to be uh, to be created in the first place harmonious relationship means to say from whom to whom yeah, it's basically from the employee and employer. You want to create that harmonious relation between these two sides because you know as workers we demand we, we demand some things and at the same time employers at the same time are having issues on how to handle our demands, whether they can give out to our so demands or our or our demands are exactly are apparently illogical so it goes both ways so the demands and the decision made by the organization needs to be equal therefore it's creating a harmonious relations between them so everyone is happy yeah so uh, you can re read here it said that refers industrial environment where workers along with the TU and management understand and accept each other as partners in progress means say partners in progress here means that not not anyone is perfect there will be bound for problems to happen in the future but when that problems occurs it can be resolved effectively and efficiently through negotiations thus thus without anyone making any uh, crazy move yeah main crazy move you know, you know what happens when uh, workers are dissatisfied right they will uh, they will boycott they will stop working they will stop uh, doing anything that the, uh, the management wants them to do so that's not good for the uh, the company and in the long term the economy of the country yeah so this is the importance of harmonious relationship making everyone happy yeah so harmonious friendly agreeable yeah so you can read there Effects of harmonious relations. So these are the effects. I think it's really clear here. You influence employee morale. Mean to say that their uh, their satisfaction, their motivation to work in their company. If your company is not treating you well, you will get demotivated, and you wouldn't like everyone there. You wouldn't like your boss, and your performance will drop. So if you are satisfied in your work, you will work better. So this is basically why a harmonious relationship is the goal of industrial relations. So this is the effect of 
HR okay HR here is meaning say harmonious relation not human resource okay HR okay second effects of HR is better productivity yeah when you're happy you uh, you perform better don't you agree means to say that if you suddenly your boss uh, increase your salary your product your productivity would increase yeah perhaps not all but that's uh, the, the theory behind motivation yeah I think you have taken uh, what you call other subjects before this such as the uh, uh, organizational behavior we talk about motivation the effect of how it uh, increase a person's ability to perform well in their in their task so it, it is part of industrial relations is responsible is in part responsible in making uh, employees fail satisfied yeah it goes both ways from the employer and the employee reduce conflicts at the workplace yeah Con reduce conflicts you don't want people to be fighting or oh, why does he get promoted or oh, why does he get uh, increase in salary but the rest of us know uh, they didn't get any so this kind of uh, conflicts arises or when the the workers are being pushed to do much work without any increment in their salary so those are what they call conflicts arising so these are the effects of hr2 avoid industrial dispute through mutual understanding and cooperation rather than uh, going through this issue uh, go going through fighting going through uh, endless uh, endless fighting they try to cooperate in order for both sides to have an equal platform for each other so they can be uh, equal in in understanding who's uh, the the other side's idea the other side's perception so they can see both sides yeah or uh, to be in the other person's shoes so they can take a look at what exactly is going on from the other side okay ensure economic growth through productivity of employees and this so it's basically from the micro level to the macro level it affects everyone in the organization if your organization is not performing then it will be it will end up being closed and that is not good for the economy yeah so that's basically a, a simple way of uh, looking through this kind of uh, effects of HR yeah? so this is types of DM yeah type of DM DM refers to us decision making in IR system so there are three ways yeah number one is unilateral let's take a look at what is meant here what is mean here it, it is sorry what it means here decisions are made by management on behalf of the employer without any interference by the workers or any other party means to say unilateral okay uni means single one so it means to say that only one party is involved in creating or making decision making for the organization doesn't care about the other parties which is the employees yeah so unilateral only one person making the decision bilateral decisions are made with participation from workers so by means that they got two parties involved by okay and tripartite means to say that three parties and these three parties you already have your employer you have the employee next you have the government here so what is the role of the government we're gonna take a look at that in later uh, later chapters so this is the NLAC uh, so the National Labor Advisory Council so is the highest tripartite consultative forum for labor and manpower issues including labor policies and uh, laws in Malaysia yeah it makes recommendation to the Minister of HR with a view to fostering a harmonious IR environment so as to increase workers productivity consists of reps from three sectors 14 rep from workers 14 from employers and 12 from government other members uh, other members are appointed MTU, MTUC, QPEX and MEF so those are trade unions okay trade unions for employees and employees in public sector or uh, in the private sector as well so this is the NLAC they will try to make uh, what you call consult how to make uh, a better environment in, in the organization in Malaysia or the, the overall industry as well to ensure that everyone is happy okay industrial relation exists to take care of the rights of the workers and then these rights needs to be done properly through law it's so you cannot suddenly just go riot to to demand whatever you want it needs to go to proper channel and this is why we are learning ir today because we want to ensure that everyone knows their right as an employee while they are working so the nlc will be the uh, consultative forum or consultative body in terms of helping people to understand further improve it overall yeah improve it improve the situation uh, functions of government in IR so there's the administrator legislator and participant so through Minister of HR 
legislator to the parliament. Legislator are the people who are creating the law. So all of the laws that are, that, are, that is that will be discussed under industrial relations uh, in the in, in the next chapters were created in the parliament because they are from the legislator. These people who created, yeah, these our MPs are the one discussing it and making sure that our rights are protected under. Uh, all these acts yeah and the participant by being the largest employer in the country so we have more than 1 million public servant yeah so this is a largest employer in the country so it's the role of the government itself there's no other what you call private companies in Malaysia that even com could even compete with the size of the government here so employer wise they need to show that they are better they are better than uh, the standard they has given okay so what are the standard? Those will also be discussed in the future. Yeah. So this is the Ministry of HR. You can read it on your own. Yeah. The, all the departments here. Mission of Ministry of HR. Yeah. This is the mission. I think it's really clear. So if any, um, I'm gonna leave this to you guys to read this on your own. Yeah. Because I think it's really straightforward. But in case you are not, uh, you you are not clear in any of the wordings or the sentences or the context, do contact me. Yeah. Uh, so I'll continue on and these are review questions so this review question I will put it in our I class later or any other medium so you can try to answer and we'll take a look at your answer and whether it managed to uh, to adhere towards what is being asked so I guess that is all from here yeah is uh, uh, for the L1 and L2 class so those are the slides and I hope to see you guys on later chapters yeah okay good night Oh, sorry. Goodbye.